Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. This video is building the ultimate restaurant table booking app and its a video series. If you are eager to level up your skills and explore the world of front-end, back-end and the cloud service, you are at the right place. In this immersive series, I will guide you through the entire development journey of crafting a cutting-edge table booking application for the restaurants. So from honing your front-end expertise with Angular to mastering the art of back-end development with the .NET API, I will cover it all. But that's not the only thing. I will also delve into the incredible world of Azure services, showing you how to leverage the power of Azure App Servers, SQL Database, CDN, Storage, and much more. And you know, the best part, by the end of the series, you will not only have a powerful and scalable application under your belt, but also be ready to seize fantastic tech opportunities that comes your way. So in this part one, I will kick off the comprehensive architectural overview, dissecting the each layer of our application and, and exploring the rock solid tech stack we'll be building upon. So if you're hungry for knowledge, eager to grow your expertise and ready to dive head first into the world of restaurant table booking apps. So let's embark on this exciting journey together with part one, architectural overview and tech stats. Come, let's get started. So this is the overview architecture of the application. So, so far what we have done is we always have videos bit in pieces. Not all the videos relates to one another or you can club everything together, right? So uh, I thought this will be the nice idea to start with an application which has from the starting to the end and as an overall uh, working application, right? So real time application where you can uh, use it or anyone can use it, right? So let's consider this. So if you look at the right side, these are the tech stacks that we will be using. Okay, a lot of Azure services and then Angular as the front end. Back end will be the .NET Core Web API 7, that will be the latest, and Angular 16, that is what we're going to use in this application. And uh, come, let's see one by one. So this is at a high level, okay? So just for understanding purpose, uh, I will explain you what is this app doing. So consider this, there was a website where you go and search your restaurant. Once you figure out a particular restaurant and then it starts showing up all the branches a restaurant will have, okay, all possible branches. Now you pick up a particular branch where you wanted to go, like based on your area. And in that, you need to select a particular date and you wanted to select a particular table. Now, not particular table, basically you need to book a table for your uh, lunch, breakfast or dinner. Okay, that's what all it is doing. Behind the scene, you know, it will uh, book the table for a particular user and then when the when the time comes, user will start receiving notification and uh, that's how uh, it uses. So let, let's go one by one, right? So first of all, in this thing, if you see, we are hosting our two application, which is the Angular application and the .NET application in the apps, Azure App Service. Right, so that will be the first uh, cloud service that we will use. Azure App Service will be hosting two different websites. One will be for our .NET Core Web API, and the other one will be for our Angular 16 application, which will act as a front-end application. Okay, now let's see what happens to this uh, .NET Core Web API. So .NET Core Web API is using the Azure SQL Server, okay, for the database, and what it will do is it will expose a bunch of endpoints. Okay, and it will also use the Redis cache for uh, to improve the performance. Most of the static data will be served through the Redis cache. Okay, if you don't want Redis cache, as in when you we build, we will have an option to just comment it out because you know you don't need to use it if you don't want. And almost I would say almost every single thing that you use in this whole overall application, almost everything is free. Okay, except the Redis cache. That's why I said you can comment this out. Right, but you will learn how to do it. Now, what else we have? So now, um, you know, what happens is in a real time situation, let's consider this, okay, uh, to the left side. A left side will be the users who will be using from the browser, right? So let's, let's consider that, but stay for a second. Uh, so before that, uh, what else we have? Uh, if you consider the, this, the center one, we have other Azure services like CDN, network delivery, I mean, it's the CDN, the content delivery network for caching the static sites. 
So why do we need the static sites uh, when the Angular application is showing up some images of the restaurants and all those CSS and all those stuff, they're all served through the CDN. We have seen this in one of the video, but we're going to use that in this overall application. Okay. We will also use this as your storage account for storing all those CSS images and, you know, user uploaded images, all those things. So that will be for the storage account. And what else? We will use the Azure Key Vault for storing the secrets. And we will also use Azure Functions. There will be three different functions, which will be considered as the background job. And the background job does its own work. And I will come to that in a moment. Okay. So these many things. And then we also use for the authentication and authorization, we will use the Azure AD B2C. And uh, now itself, you can see a lot of services being used, right? And a lot of users were asking, how do we use scoped content uh, for the Azure AD B2C or the role based stuff? So that is what we're going to see today. Okay. In this overall application. So let's consider the real time scenario. Okay. As a user you as a user as a public user you come to a browser and hit our ui endpoint okay a website and then you don't need to log in you don't need to be registered that's absolutely fine so when you start searching in the restaurant you will see the ui you will pick up the restaurant branch and then a particular date and then how many people you are going like if you're going as a friends gang you know from the office whatsoever right so you choose number of people the app will have intelligence to connect to the database, I mean, to the web API, and it will tell you finally that, okay, provide me your name, email address, and phone number, and you're all set, that's it. But you can also log in as a user so that your information is saved and you just need to book a table and you don't need to provide those redundant information. Okay, so there are two options as a user with no authentication and with authenticated user, okay, from the public purpose perspective so this is all from the public perspective now what will happen is once you book a table once you go to that restaurant right somebody from the restaurant will have their own login which is what we call this as employee role okay so they will have a role called employee that person has to log into the website so the application is the same application but it will detect that you're an employee so for you, the UI is going to be different. What you will do is you will start seeing up who have booked all these tables and they will see if your name comes fine, then they will do a check in. And once you are checked in, you're free to go inside the restaurant and go and enjoy your meal. At this point of time, the booked uh, table will be changed from the, uh, you know, from the booked state uh, from the occupied state. So initially it will be an available state and then somebody books it, it changes to book to state. When you occupy, it gets into occupied state. Okay. Once you are done with the restaurant, you're leaving from the restaurant, that particular employee or the server or the servant, you know, the, the service people, whoever is serving you there, will change that particular slot into available again so that, right, someone else can also book and enjoy their meal. Similarly, there will be an admin role. It is also from an employee perspective, but he will have a different UI. He will be able to see all the branches information of what is going on, how many is booked, how many is free, how, which restaurant is much occupied, which restaurant is not occupied and all those things, right? So why do we need to do all these things? In order to show you that from a UI perspective, based on the role, you can have different sets of customized UI where based on your login, the UI screens will change and everybody is going to use the same endpoints, I mean, the same UI, right? So that's why. So I hope you understand the overall concept of this application and I hope you will be excited to use all these services, learn. I'm, I'm assuring that once you learn all the video series and do all these things by your hand, right? Though I will provide you each and every single piece of code on a daily basis, so as and when I develop every single video, part one, part two, and so on, so, right? All the course will be checked in. You can feel free to follow me as I go, or uh, you can download the code and then later you can run it. But my suggestion is go by day one, two, three, exactly how I start showing you the videos. Okay. I have a structured video series, which will 
realistically show you how you build end-to-end -end application right i hope you enjoyed this if you have any questions do write it in the comment section and you can guess and tell me how long do you think we will be taking this to complete this complete end-to-end -end application okay so like i'll be splitting this whole application into a bunch of videos and each video will come on every day and you can guess how many days it's going to take and let's see who is going to be close enough right at the end of the video all right guys i'll see you in the next video which will be the database design thank you thanks for watching if you found this video helpful please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more tech tutorials and don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified when we post new videos if you have any questions or suggestions leave them in the comments below happy coding